Hey everyone, I'm Chris Ronzio. Welcome back to Playbook 2021. Today, you get the best bonus content that we could ever possibly provide, which is me backstage talking with my friend, mentor, Michael E. Gerber. Michael, how are you, sir? I'm absolutely perfect, Chris. How are you? I'm amazing, and I can't wait to dive into this with you. So as the people that are watching know, We've got a little book that we worked on over the last kind of couple years that this project came together, and you were so gracious to write the forward to this book because of how profoundly impactful your work has been on my own entrepreneurial career. So for those of you that are listening, you've heard of the E-Myth, you've heard of the dozens of different E-Myth books. If you're watching on video, you see part of my collection here. All of, of this content taught me so much about why I needed to get out of my business. And it was years and years and years before starting Trainual that I was immersed in this content. And now today, as we're launching the business playbook, as you're participating in this event, you're getting to see some of the recipes, the best practices that I've put together for you on how you can create this for your business too. But a lot of this starts back with Michael and with the E-Myth. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's how these two things are connected. So Michael, Probably the most natural place to start is I'm curious if you remember how I even got on your radar, like when we met, how you even heard about me or Trainual. Like, do you remember that? I, I absolutely do. I want to correct something you said. Uh, it's said most often, and it's an incorrect take on the work that we do and the impact that the EMIT has had on millions upon millions upon millions of young, old, middle-aged entrepreneurs, would-be entrepreneurs, technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. You said, um, I wanted to get out of my business. I want to correct that. It wasn't that you wanted to get out of your business because in reality, you wanted to get into your business in a completely more strategic way. And the only way that you could do that, the only way you could accomplish that, the only way you could become the true chief executive officer of that, the leader of that, is to rise above your business so that you could look down on your business from a height that would enable you to see the entirety of your business and the way in which all of the operating structure that made up and constituted your business could produce the explicit results you were focused on producing. And hear me that word, I use that word explicit results, not sort of results, not hopefully results, but explicit results exactly in the same fashion as a McDonald's franchise has done for years, hmm. explicit. And so your business is in the business of documenting that explicit way that effectively anyone and everyone who considers themselves to be an entrepreneur is approaching the design, build, launch, and grow of their enterprise. Not their business, their enterprise. Starting with the job, taking it to the business, taking it, I mean, to the practice, taking it to the business, taking it to the enterprise. The evolution of an enterprise from a company of one to a company of 1,000. Now, I said all that stuff, and I'm sorry for correcting you in the midst of our conversation, but I wanted to make certain you didn't say that, get out of my business, get out of my business, because everybody misinterprets that. So it's an important distinction. I appreciate it. I stand corrected. I wasn't trying to get out of my business entirely, but just as you said, trying to get into my business in a different way, you know, to change my role in my business from doing the work, doing the work over and over <laughs> to, to making an impact on the enterprise, like you said. So thank you. I stand corrected. So, <laughs> so with that, uh, how, did, how did we even meet? For everyone that's listening. Well, we, we met because you contacted me <laughs> after having read the book and you started asking me questions. And as you began to ask me questions, I began to give you answers. And unlike so many others who come to me, and believe me, millions have come to me, um, who are stimulated by the idea that sits at the heart of the e-myth, uh, because it's so appealing to everybody. Um, 
to get free of the, the constraints, to get free of the, the, the frustrations, to get free of having to do it, do it, do it, do it, be there, be there, be there, be there for everyone and everything, to be ev- the answer to everyone's problem. They just couldn't stand it any longer. And that's why 77% of all startup small businesses fail in their first year. Think about that, Chris. 77% of small businesses in their first year. Imagine what you could have done with those 77% if they had started it in their mind in a completely different way than they have. So that's what happened with us. You listened. You're one of those who listen. You listened and you said like this, like this, like this. And we had an engagement over a short period of time, not a deep engagement, but a sufficient engagement for me to stimulate your imagination to the point where you said, holy cow, I get it, Gerber. I get it. And then you did. And, you know, so the the lesson for me and one I'd share with everyone that's listening is to me, you were always a kind of uh, a, an imaginary character. You know, I'd read your book. I, I never thought that we'd interact personally. Uh, but when I started Trainual, I started shooting these videos, just sharing some tips from my favorite books. And of course, yours is one of those. And I think one of the e-myth coaches that you had known for a long time saw one of those videos and said, oh, you should, I should introduce you to Michael. That to me was like, I, I may as well have gotten a, a, you know, an introduction to like, to be walking on the red carpet at the Oscars or something. And I, and I thought that's amazing. So you were so gracious. You got on a call with, uh, with me and, uh, and your wife, Liz Dahlia, and, and invited me out to, uh, to California. And, and I got to have lunch with Liz Dahlia, his beautiful wife and, and get to know these two on a personal level. So I so appreciate you inviting me into your world and, and, uh, kind of taking me under, under your wing in the, the early days there. So of course your brand, your business, your legacy has inspired millions. We've talked about that. And f- for the people that are maybe just picking up my book, what would you say the connection between everything you've done and the the this new you know first piece of content I'm putting out is? Well, it's really quite simple. Um, in your book, you effect- effectively define the process that Trainual has applied um, to the development of the documentation system that's absolutely critical if any company is going to become. Um, what I call a business format franchise. Hmm. Now, effectively, you're not in the franchise business. You're not essentially saying to everybody you can become a franchise. Right. What you are saying is documentation is critical because if you don't document it, you don't leave it behind. If you don't leave it behind, you're not going to ever replace yourself to the degree that you hope to. If you can't give the exact words you use to Murray, Murray is going to use whatever words Murray makes up. Mm. If you can't give the exact process to Mary, Mary is going to do it in exactly the way she thinks best to do it at any particular point in time. And every single one of us know that any single point in time, given the natural way of people who are insufficiently trained, insufficiently inspired, insufficiently developed, always do it in a half-assed way. (laughs) Therefore, something is critical. Let me document that. Let me document that. Let me document that called write the sucker down, John, write it down. And because John has difficulty writing it down, you've created a methodology for doing it for John, Hmm. which once John gets this message, once John hears, watches this interview, once John reads the E-Myth Revisited, Once John reads any one of my E-Myth vertical books, the E-Myth chiropractor, the E-Myth HVAZ contractor, the E-Myth accountant, the E-Myth attorney, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, John, whatever he does will immediately begin to appreciate why you're doing what you're doing. And he'll say, thank God, Chris Ronzio, thank you 
for making this service available to me so I don't have to do that too. Hmm. I can get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. So you mentioned the, this franchise model, the format, the business format of a franchise. And in the books, you talk about the franchise prototype. Why do you think the franchise system is such an aspirational thing for businesses that are just building? What is it about a franchise that everyone should seek to replicate? Well, it's very, very simple. It provides you with a method for fulfilling a result. It provides you with a method, a proven, tangible, replicable, learnable method, a system for getting what you want. There is nothing on the planet more exciting than that because the failure of small business, I just told you the first year, 77%, but understand fewer than 5% of all small businesses ever reach maturity. They all fail. Yeah. That means 95% fail. Mm -hmm. Franchise eliminates that. I've taken the franchise model and simply said, now any and every single entrepreneur can apply the franchise model to the development of his or her company. They can go to work on their company to build the absolutely perfect representative method through which they produce the results they intend to produce. How do you do that? By testing, by testing, by testing, by testing, by valuation, by valuation, by valuation. And after a particular point in time, it works. <laughs> you say, holy cow, you don't say hi, Mary. You say, hello, Mary. What a delight <laughs> to meet you today. And those words are like magic. Who knows why those words work? And we can get into all of that. Why do those words work rather than these words work? Who cares? These words work. And we know that because we've done that. And we've done that 3,476 times. Yeah. You know, it's it's so interesting because the, the customers that we see up, see sign up and try to document a business that isn't working are the ones that go back to the drawing board over and over again, feel like they're wasting their time because they haven't put that testing in. They haven't done it. You know, when I was writing this book, I had a friend that started it, tried to start a franchise business, but never had a successful first location. It was just trying to jump to, to, to scale in the business. And so there's got to be a right time to work on this. So I, you mentioned 3000 something times, like how much repetition or how much perfection should entrepreneurs that are listening try to achieve before they go and start documenting and replicating? Chris, if I gave a number, people would say, oh, so it's four, it's seven. <laughs> um, hear me, my co-author um, who wrote the E-Myth HVAC contractor uh, told me um, by the numbers, he's read the E-Myth Revisited 39 times. He sold his company 23 times. Hmm. He built the first franchise and sold it. He built the second franchise and sold it. The third, the fifth, the 12th, the 20th, the 23rd, to the point where he said, I don't have to sell it. I can grow it. Hmm. His company is now up to 150 million in annual revenue on its way to a billion turnkey, hmm. replicable, absolutely replicable again and again and again and again. So it's not how soon can I get it done? It's that I can get it done, but I'm focused on it until it's done. I just turned 85. A guy says to me, Gerber, you've been doing this. Have you quit yet? I said, of course not. This is my life's aim. Yeah. This is why I'm here. This is who I am. This is what I do. I'm a creator. I'm a creator. I'm an imagineer, as Walt Disney called them. <laughs> um, and you are too. So there's no when I get done. There's when it works to produce the dream, the vision, the purpose, and the mission 
that I have in my heart and my mind. My dream is to transform the state of small business worldwide. My vision is to invent the McDonald's of small business development services. Hmm. My purpose is that every single small business owner who aspires to do what I'm teaching people to do can be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee or even McDonald's itself. And my mission is to invent the business development system that makes it possible for me to realize my dream, my vision, my purpose. Not only for me to realize it, Chris, but for as you demonstrated, for you to realize it. Mm -hmm. For every single individual you're working with at Train You All, every small business owner who's attracted to your story, to your message, um, that they can realize it. It's free. Yeah, I I, I want to stop there because I know you have some incredible content around how business owners can think about their own dream and their own mission and vision and purpose. And where would you point people to if they're just interested in learning more about that? I would just simply say, go to Michael at MichaelEGerber.com. Michael at MichaelEGerber.com or Chris, get the um, actual um, link from Luz Delia. <laughs> okay. And she'll share it with you and you can share it with everybody else. Have them come to me and they can come and join me in the dreaming room online. Perfect. The dreaming That's what I was room hoping online. To yep. Okay. And I will blow their ever loving minds. <laughs> All right. Well, he's not joking. So go check that out. Now, uh, you mentioned this a few times already, but so many businesses fail in their first year, uh, an astronomical percentage, and can never really get over the hump to where they are testing things and finding the right way to do things and scaling the right way. So I'm curious, is there a an obstacle that you see a lot of business owners not getting over? Is it is something to do with focus? Is it something to do with, with like, what is the problem why, why so many fail? Chris, the problem is very, very simple. People start a business because they know how to do the work. So if he's a real estate agent, they start, they go off to become a real estate agent because they learn how to sell real estate. And then they go to work in the business, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. They not only sell it, but now they look for prospects. They not only look for prospects, they now try to develop software. Not only try to develop software, they try to develop responses to all the re negative feedback that they get. They not only try to get responses to all, and on and on and on. They're working in it, working in it, working in it, and ultimately they become consumed by it because they've got a limited perspective about what a business is. They think a business is what they call soul entrepreneurship. Solo entrepreneurship. Solo entrepreneurship is not a business. Solo entrepreneurship is a job. And unfortunately, for the vast majority of people who would even deign to call themselves a solo entrepreneur, that job sucks because it ultimately fails. Ultimately, you do the numbers, it fails, it fails, it fails, it fails. So that's why small businesses fail. Because the model they've incorporated into the very things they do doesn't work. It's broken. It's been broken from the very beginning. We teach people how to fix it. But we fix people's minds, not their business. And as we fix people's minds, just as you experienced when you visited us to have that meal and Carlsbad, California, we fix people's minds, something transformational occurs. We're in the business of mind shift. And it's the most important business anybody can be in. Well, I think you're already starting to shift some minds that are that are listening to this. And uh, of course, if people haven't already dove into your content, then that's where they need to start. 
Uh, I want to circle back to something you said at the beginning as we kind of wrap this up. You mentioned that what stood out about me and some others is that uh, not only did we read and consume your books, but we acted on them. We we took action. We, yeah. we lived them. And so for the people that are getting a copy of this new book, The Business Playbook, what, what would be your advice to them uh, as they're picking up this fresh new text and they're reading through your forward and they're embarking on this? How, how do they not mess this up? I would say very simply, read it and then do it. Read it and then do it. Roll in train you all. Whether you think you're ready, whether you think you're not, makes absolutely no difference. And roll in train you all, and you will absolutely understand what's missing in this picture. And as you begin to do that, as you begin to feel that, as you begin to understand that, something transformational will occur in your mind. Mm. As your mind is reshaped, so shall your business. I love it. And, it, you know, th there is something transformational that happens when you are working on the systems of your business, because as you start to take on that work and you start to feel a sense of pride and accomplishment for doing that work, you feel less drawn to derive that sense of accomplishment from the technical work in the business. There's something almost yeah. addictive, right? Absolutely. Um, you begin to see a bigger picture. That bigger picture is stimulating. That bigger picture is innovating. That bi bigger picture is what makes a Disney Disney. That bigger picture is what makes a Steve Jobs Steve Jobs. That bigger picture is what makes an Apple an Apple and so forth and so forth and so forth and so on. And the minute you get that, you begin to understand that the entrepreneur lives in a world so much broader, so much more vital, so much more invigorating than the technician does. Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Narrow, 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 as opposed to seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, and creating it wide, broad, visceral, um, stunning. It's a beautiful thing to experience. Well, Michael, in your words, again, for everyone else, if, if you're looking to build a company from one to 1,000. If you're looking to transform your small business like Michael is inspiring millions around the world to do, if you're reading through all of these books and just wanting to put something to use in, in, in practice, uh, hopefully this conversation has given you the motivation to go read the book, go do the book, go make a difference in your business. Uh, Michael, it's been so great chatting with you as always, but thank you so much for being involved in this project with me. My absolute delight, Chris. Thank you. It's always a delight. It's always a pleasure. And it's always a pleasure because every time I see you, you're in a broader, wider, more original and creative world. I love it. <laughs> and I'll keep working on it. Thank you again, Michael.